Zebra is something I can't really show you, but it's uh, it will give you a tolerance, so you can set the tolerance. So you can say, if we have something that's white with a little bit of detail in it, uh, if we turn the shutter speed down, so the the brightness raises in the, in the areas, when the, it starts to lose detail in that area, depending on this tolerance you set, it will show a zebra pattern. So you can see really easy where you're blowing out an area. And your focus assist is where when we tap the the focus ring, so we'll just turn that off, and you'll see now I can focus in manual, and there's nothing. If we go back to the menu, turn that on, when we do the focus, it'll zoom in. So we can really nail the focus down on that, and we can move around with the, the back rear dial, and you can click it and zoom in even more. So if you really wanted to make sure you got something in focus, I know my camera's bouncing around a lot. It's on a crappy spot. Yeah, so you can play with that like that. It's really, to me, it's one of the most useful tools. I always leave that on. Uh, the time is how long it lasts. So if we just let it on two seconds and then we zoomed in, it'll be like one, two, and then it'll pop back out. There we go. And if we did it on five seconds, it should be like one, two, three, four. Hello, anybody? There we go, that's five seconds. Uh, grid lines, so these are your different grid lines. So you have these different rules, like rules of third, or you know how pictures should be. I never use them myself. And marker display is a similar thing, so it will give you whatever markers we set in here. So you could have to say this is gonna be a safe area where you wanna keep all your content inside and everything else, you know, you may lose it for whatever reason. There may be a border or there may be uh, on-screen graphics like a frame around your video. Just feel there's loads of different ones like that. I won't go into them because I don't really know them that much. Yeah, I'll leave them off. Now, audio display, I don't think you'll see. So it basically gives you, uh, when you're recording video, let me try that. Auto review, I always leave turned off, so it's like you take a picture, it'll fire up that picture. Display button is just a, an assignment, so it's like a binding, so you can say, uh, switch between your binder to your monitor. Now the way I have this set up is I have that, the upper button, where it has your AL and your lock. I have that button to switch me to between the, the, the viewfinder and the EVF. And that works really great, because if I'm going to do uh, things like long exposure, I want to be away from the camera, or the opt or the stuff with the astrophotography if I'm going to port the video out to something else. And to save battery, I have the EVF on, and when I'm away from the EVF, it shuts off, so it's not displaying anything. Uh, peaking is for focus, so you can set a color, it's not going to show us, so whatever was in focus here, it would light up in whichever color I choose. Exposure set guide. I don't know what that is. Sorry, I have to look that one up. Uh, live view display is one of the best things on the mirrorless camera. So basically, if you're looking through the 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 optical viewfinder on this camera is a screen. So Sony have these super high resolution screens. So it's probably like 1,200 DPI, which and this screen's only 0.7 of an inch diagonal, and so it, and it's uh, you're looking through there. It's hard to see. It's even a screen. What the camera can do, it can do a lot of trickery and say, with all the settings you have, this is what your result's going to look like. And that's what this does, it turns that on. So if you turn your exposure right down, this, the sensor is so sensitive that it can try and show you a, a, a lightened area, like you're going to turn your shutter frame right down or something like that. And it just gives you a, a lot of information that you wouldn't have. The only way you'd have that on an SLR is to take a picture and get that result and then change your settings, take a picture. If you turn that off, you will just see whatever you would see like through an SLR. Okay, face detect area is just the, so the, the, the camera has so much, so much sensor for the focus, so I don't know if this is like 399 or I can't remember what it is, but they only cover a certain area of the, of the, of the actual sensor, and this will show you what that is. So if you're trying to get something in focus, using the autofocus outside of this box, uh, it's not going to happen. Anyway, we can see that for a change. So you can see that box around the outside is actually where the, the phase detection will happen. Anything outside of there, you're going to get nothing.
So pre-AF pre -AF is basically if you're moving it around, it will uh, roughly get close to the autofocus that you're going to be, so it focus quicker. That's quite good for video as well, so you're moving the video around and it will, it will trace very slowly to something in the area. I found you use that a lot. So zoom setting is related to the before with JPEGs, so we're going to be zooming in and using a little bit of the sensor and that'll save it as a lower definition file, so I never used it, it's probably best not to go into that. What this camera does have, and it's quite an it, a hidden function, is it'll lock on the eye, it detects where the eye is, and it'll just lock on it, and it's brilliant. Like, you know, if you take 100 pictures fast, and you have that eye tracking on, most of them will be in focus, like it's really, really good. Okay, find a monitor. This is this is disabled because I have it disabled and I have it associated to a custom button. So the when I press, as I was saying before, when I press my back button, uh, it'll switch between one or the other. You can have it so it's on the back screen, and if you put your eye to the there's a sensor in the EVF, then it will switch to the EVF, and you pull away, it'll switch back. Now this is basically uh, when the camera will fire. And without lens, I mean, if I have it on my scope, there's no way of knowing there's a lens on there because it's just dumb, it's just a mechanical fitting. So I want it to fire without the lens and um, without the card too. I'm guessing if that's, if you've got it remotely docked with your computer or something and you're saving straight over to the computer, you want it to fire out with a card. I don't really need that enabled because I never do that. Oh, so this is what the priority is during firing. So you can be, uh, I want it to fire all the time. I don't care if you're in focus or not, just fire. And then that one's, it's got to be in focus from the, for the autofocus before it'll shoot, and I would hate that. And uh, then there's a balance. I've never tried that, so I don't know. Maybe that's okay too. Uh, and that's in single mode, and then this is in continuous mode, so it's the same settings. Okay, AF with shutter. It's basically just... Your shutter button focus, you know, there's, you see a lot of stuff now with like, how to improve your photos amazingly, is a sign of back button focus. I never had a problem with it myself, so uh, maybe, maybe it's better, maybe it's better, I don't know. Uh, so that's what it is, so if we turn that off, then if we go, it won't focus, with my, when I'm pressing the button halfway down, and then any point in the shoot will do it, and then night will focus. See, it'll lock on to that kind of stuff. Okay, else shutter is a little bit. Uh, that's just so when it does change the focus, it tweaks the exposure. So I just leave that on auto. I don't never really have any problems with that. I guess you could turn that off if you if you're not doing quick fire stuff. Maybe it helps a little bit. Uh, silent shooting is this camera will fire completely just basically on the like the live view feed it's getting. So it won't use the shutter or the curtain, if you will. Uh, so if we put that on, we should be able to just, you won't be able to hear anything there. I don't know all the implications of it. I'm sure there's, there are a lot. I don't know if it reduces the, the quality because it's just a live feed. It really can't be the 42 megapixel quality. I've not looked into it too much. And then uh, this is obviously the curtain. So you'll see like, You'll hear like two actions in there when that's off, and then when we turn the, the e curtain off, sorry, on, so it uses electronic rather than the mechanical, so it'll just be one because you, you're missing out on that mechanical action. Again, I'm not 100% sure on the, the benefits, but I generally, without, if I'm I'll, I'll put it on silent shooting if I'm somewhere where I, I need to be really quiet. Otherwise, I won't bother. Now, I've never used auto image extract. I think it's if you're on continuous shoot mode, it'll take like the best picture uh, rather than all of them. Six of tab two. Okay, exposure compensate uh, depending on the lighting you're using. So, I'm, being, I'm not using a flash at the moment. Uh, you can reset the compensation. Face recognition is what I told you before, you can register the, I think up to five people. So then it will pre-select, like if you've got smile options on and things like that, it will, or the, the eye focus, it will prioritize those people that you've registered in the camera. I never used it, it's pretty cool. Uh, APS-C mode is, or 35 mil mode is one of the best options in this camera, I think. It will actually crop it uh, from the full frame down to the APS-C. So it's like if you, all my lenses at the moment are prime, 
and it's like I have two lenses in one. So if I'm videoing with like my 85 mil, I can put this mode on and it'll just crop it down so it's like a 110 mil or something, I guess. And uh, so it's really, if you do use primes, it's like you do have two, two different lenses. Uh, we, I can show you the, so if we look at the boundaries there, so we've got kind of a, a bit of space on the side of, on the right side of the lens and quite a bit of space of the, of the owl. And if we jump into that guy, now you can see we're really cropped in there. So we're, we're clashing with both the owl and the lens. So that's really, really cool. I'm not sure with auto when it chooses that. Like, does it say there's nothing out here? Let's just crop in. I don't know. I'd have to read about that. Now, this is, I believe, for if you want to, if you want to calibrate your lenses, so you can get like a focus grid, and you can calibrate them. And there's a way to go through that. There are YouTube videos on that, and you can go and you can calibrate each lens, I believe. Okay, if system is, if you, I believe it's if you've got a, a lens that's not a, an E-mount compatible lens using an adapter then you can tweak the settings to get the autofocus, uh, you know, the, the more intelligent stuff in that, in that lens through an adapter still to work. Video light mode, so this is if you're using remote fire and stuff like that, you can set all the synchronization up, so how are you going to do that? Okay, function mode set is basically all the, the buttons on the back of the camera, so if we click on that, so it's like where do you have the different things assigned? And you can go in there and really customize out everything where it is and custom key so yeah we have four custom keys so we have two on the on the front at the top and then we have one at the back we set the EVF and then one is your uh, trash button so when the trash when you're not in kind of picture viewing mode or browsing your the, what's on the camera uh, your trash button really doesn't have a use but then it becomes a custom button so the main important one here, I, I think, is the IAF uh, Custom 2. Now, you won't see that function anywhere on the camera inside of it. And it's not by default assigned to anything, I don't believe, or it never was when I got mine. And it's one of the best functions on the camera. Like, if you've got a bunch of people, you can put IAF on, and it'll just lock on their eyes for focus. You know, and you're always, like, even with a dog or something like that, you would lock on their eyes for focus. So I don't know if I can try it with me. Take like priority for a moment. And that mode. I don't know if it's going to work because I'm sending it crazy. There we go. So you can see it's locking on my eye. And so, I mean, it's pointing at a screen, not a real eye, so I can imagine I'm really freaking it out a little bit. But you can see it's fantastic. It really, really works. And it's kind of a hidden function. It's crazy. I mean, maybe now they changed it with later versions. So yeah, it's uh, on the custom keys, you have to go in and you see which custom you want to set that to and go in and choose IAF. There's loads of customizations you can do. I mean, and you can customize your dials as well, exactly the same. Okay, I don't know what zoom ring rotate is. It may be something to do with uh, a, a camera that's not, a lens not uh, compatible with a camera. Movie button is, uh, you on the top wheel where you select the mode, if you've got it in movie mode, then the movie button won't work. So if you choose always, then it'll always work. I don't use the movie mode to record movies. I use uh, manual. So I have it on always, otherwise my movie button wouldn't work. Uh, that's to lock your dial a wheel, I think. So when it's recording movie, a video, you can't just touch them and play with the settings. You have to set it all up and then press record.